Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Spirit of Fire Fellowship. I'm Pastor Mike May here in the great city of Richmond, Virginia. And we want to welcome everybody to our online worship experience. As you can see, we are virtual this week, but we will be back in person next week. And so we just thank God for all of you tuning in today and showing up. We want you to go ahead and take this time to go ahead and share on your social media platforms, share it on your uh, Facebook accounts and things of that nature. And we just want you to invite somebody to come in today uh, because we're going to get into the word of God and we are going to see what God has for us today. And so we just want to thank you for all of our first time visitors. If this is your very first time tuning in and logging in, we want to welcome you. So on behalf of my wife, Pastor Raquel and myself, we want to welcome all of you and we want to just bless you. We want to make you feel at home here. There are many other platforms that you could be on, but God has you here today and you've made the decision to tune in. And so we thank you. So don't change that dial. Don't go to anywhere else. Stay right here. I believe God is going to have something specifically for you. So with that being said, let's have a word of prayer as we get into today's message. Father, we just thank you for this. Another opportunity to minister to these, your precious sheep. I thank you that revelation knowledge of your word will flow freely from heaven uninterrupted and unhindered by any satanic or demonic force. None of me, all of you. Holy Spirit, speak to my vocal cords and think through my mind to bring wisdom, knowledge, and good understanding of the Word of God. We do approach your holy written word reverently. We pray for every ear that is anointed to hear and every heart open ready to receive the engrafted Word of God which is able to save our souls and we bless you for it. Father, we ask that you expand our territory and our reach now. We thank you that we are increasing in you. We thank you. We covered the gifts of the spirit to be an operation and demonstration as needed. We thank you, Father, for the anointing that removes every burden, that destroys every yoke. We thank you for your word that it richly works in us. And that, Father, we meditate upon it day and night and observe to do according to all that's written therein. For you said in your word that we'll make our way prosperous and we'll have good success. And so we just thank you for it now. Holy Spirit, we acknowledge you as the teacher. We acknowledge you as the comforter. You're the one ready to give us peace. And so we just thank you that you are here today with us in the midst of us dwelling and abiding on the inside of us. I thank you for the anointing upon me today to remove burdens and to destroy yokes. And Father, I thank you that I cannot do this without you. Holy Spirit, I acknowledge you. I cannot do this without you. So I depend on you and I trust in you today. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, intercessors, I want y'all praying. I want y'all praying. I want y'all praying to help get involved with this message. And so if you have your Bibles, I want you to go to the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 2. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. I'm continuing on this series entitled Greater. Um, this may be part four, part three, four, four, something around there. But today I want to talk about dressed for greater, the anointing upon you, the anointing on you. We talked about the anointing within the past couple of weeks. And so today I want to deal with the anointing upon when God's power comes upon your life. What is it that can happen? What is it that you expect to take place? I believe to be um, to optimize this Christian life and to fulfill what God has called us to do. We need his power and his ability to get the job done. This is the supernatural power of God. God super on our natural to cause us to do things supernaturally above the normal, above the natural. OK, and so even what I'm doing now, preaching, preach, I cannot preach or teach without God's anointing. God has to call me to do this. I don't just get up one day. I didn't just get up one day and say, Lord, I'm just going to go ahead and pick up a Bible and just start preaching and start a church and do all this stuff. No, God led me to do this. God called me. God anointed me. When I say that when God calls you to do something, he anoints or equips you to get the job done. And so when you walk in your space, in your lane, whatever that is, there is a grace, there is an anointing. I'm giving you these different terminologies to you that we use sometimes for these things. There is a grace on your life to teach, to be a doctor, a lawyer, a janitor. I don't care. Whatever it is, God has graced you to do it. And God's ability is available to you to do it at a high level, at the optimal level. OK, at the highest level, 
because we are called kings and priests unto our God. And part of the definition of a, a priest is to be a chief amongst your competitors, the best at what you do. And so there's nothing wrong with achieving high levels of success. What do we, what do we mean by that? Success is you fulfilling the will of God for your life and being faithful in it and doing what he told you to do. So you can't judge your life off of somebody else's assignment. Always remember that. So somebody, and then too, this is the thing, what God needs for another to get their job done may not be the same thing he needs for you to get your job done. What you need to find out is what God has called you to do and be settled in that and say, God, you've equipped me to do this. I don't care how much that looks good. If I'm called to do this thing, then I'm anointed for this thing. And so I'm excited about this as I'm, as I'm just standing here and, and just getting ready to preach this message. There's so much that goes on in me sometimes while I'm praying that God wants us to stretch. He wants us to grow. He wants us to increase. And whenever he comes on the scene, he stretches us. He increases us. He stretches our faith. He says, I need you to believe for something bigger than what you can do in your own ability to get it done. If it, listen, if it's something that you can do in your own ability, then nine times out of 10 or probably 10 times out of 10, it's not a God sized vision. Usually he gives you something that only you can do with him. You, you hear what I'm saying? So that way our dependency is on him. We trust in him. And so we take no glory. How can I take glory for something that ain't about my ability? Yes, I have a part to play in obeying what he's telling me to do, my work ethic, all of those things, believing him. But ultimately is his ability that's been placed on me to get this job done. So no matter how many times people celebrate you and tell you how great you are at something, I still give God all the glory. I can still say thank you and that's cool and all, but I'm first and foremost got to God be the glory. This ain't me. So the wisdom when stuff starts to flow, sometimes when that anointing is activated, I'm like, man, that was good, Lord. That was good, Holy Spirit. And so I acknowledge him. And so before I get into all that, I wanna, I wanna start with something. Um, here in 1 Corinthians chapter two, and so we talked about the anointing within. We talked about the fruit of the spirit. We talked about the character of Christ, how our character is supposed to be developed so that you can handle where God is taking you. There, there's, there's, there's this thing. Some people don't know. They, they push for things all their life. They believe for these great things, but you got to stop and say, why are you believing for it? Do you want to be seen and known so that your name could be great? That was the problem with the people at the tower that built the Tower of Babel. Um, they wanted to build a temple or a tower to make their name great. It had nothing with God's glory. It had nothing with what he wanted to do. They wanted something to make themselves look good. And so this is why we dealt with the spirit within, dealing with our character, dealing with our nature, our born again nature, and saying this is how we're to act. This is how we're to respond so that God can now entrust us and trust us. That's the, that's the thing. Can God trust us to get the job done? And so whenever you think about what's next and what God wants you to do, I released this, uh, this video yesterday. I went live yesterday. And one of the things that was the question that I asked was what's next. And sometimes people are asking that for themselves. What's next for me, God, what do you want me to do? And so you're supposed to obey the last thing he told you to do. And so what's in your heart to do, be faithful in fulfilling that, then he'll begin to reveal to you the next thing. Be quick to obey what he's telling you to do. And so even with being quick to obey, even if you don't fully understand everything, begin to move in that area and in that direction, and God will begin to assist you and help you along the way. And he'll give you everything you need to get that assignment done. Whoever that's for right now, don't worry about it. God will get you what you need when you need it. God will get you what you need when you need it. And so if you don't need it at this moment, still be faithful to what he told you to do. Still be faithful to what he told you to do and know that God has already graced you for this assignment. Now here in 1 Corinthians 2, I'm going to start in verse 1, reading verses 1 through 5. This is in the King James Version. Um, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 1 through 5. And it says, and our brethren, this is Paul speaking, and our brethren, when I came to you, came not with excellency of speech or of wisdom, declaring unto you the testimony of God. 
For I determined not to know anything among you save or except Jesus Christ and him crucified. And I was with you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling. And my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and of power that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. And so look at what Paul is saying here to summarize it. Paul's saying, don't look on me. I'm not coming to you with my own eloquency of speech. I'm not this great orator, even though I can speak well. I'm a, you got to understand Paul was a very learned man. He was very, he was, he was like the chief theologian at that time. This dude was well learned, well versed in what he did. But once he got born again, he says, I don't accept, I don't say, I don't declare to know anything except Jesus Christ and him crucified. So now it's like, wait a minute, all of my accolades, all of my decree, degrees, all of that stuff really means nothing because my dependency is on him. And so I don't come to you with my own wisdom, but I come to you to demonstrate God's power. What God can do with a man like me, with a person like you, that he can transform and change you and now set you on a different course for your life. But then you realize, man, this is God's power at work in me. This is God's power working through me that your faith should not stand in man's wisdom, but in God's power, your faith. So many times because we're in information overload that many times we're searching after men's wisdom and it's okay to have mentors. It's okay to have people counseling you. All that stuff is good and great, but it should not trump the power and the wisdom that God releases to you. You hear me? You hear me? Because sometimes we we now deify men and then we begin to lift them up more than God's word. God says my word needs to be ele um, elevated. My power needs to be exalted. I need to be exalted in your eyes so that your dependency is on me and not trusting in everybody else around you. Because now once it's all said and done, you still need God to get the job done. Once you even get the information, you need his blessing. You need his power on what it is he's telling you to do to get the job done. Yes, you can come up with your marketing strategy. Yes, you can come up with all this stuff. Yes, you can come up with your budget, but God needs to breathe on that thing to have it multiplied and amplified so that you can begin to do some extraordinary things in God's eyes and for the kingdom of God. Now in Daniel chapter 11, verse 32, Daniel chapter 11, verse 32, and it reads here, and such as do wickedly against the covenant shall be, uh, shall he corrupt by flatteries. But the people that do know their God shall be strong and do exploits. The people that know their God shall be strong and do exploits. He's saying, I need you. I need you. The people who know their God, who trust God, who believe God. This goes back. This makes me think about the scripture. Without faith is impossible to please him because they that come to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. And so when God starts, once you get to know God and who he is, and then you realize how he made you, that when he tells you to do something and you have his backing in this area, then it's like, okay, you got to renew your mind and meditate on the fact that if God told me to do this, that he's anointed me to do this and I will be successful at it. Even in the midst of adversity, I got to keep the anchor of that word that he told me that I got to realize he said, take care of this first. He said to do this. He's guiding me. He's leading me. He's directing me that anointing. See, when the Holy Spirit shows up, the anointing shows up, the burden removing yoke, destroying power of God. Listen, God will give you wisdom to show you how to get out of debt, how to get that thing done. Whatever it is, the wisdom of God, the power of God in operation will show you what to do. Listen, I remember not too long ago, some years ago, when um, we had to make a move and all of a sudden to get my son into a particular school that we was believing for. And at that time, our credit score, I know mine was not at the place to even be qualified to get approved for anything. And I'm telling you, my brother um, and sister-in-law had just ended up not too long before had purchased a home. And he had told me about a, a, a the, the testimony of what happened with them and that his credit score shot up. It may be around the same amount of points, maybe around a hundred so points that got him qualified to be approved. It was nothing that he did. And I was just celebrating with him. 
sure enough, the exact same thing happened with me. That my credit, for no reason, I didn't do anything different at that moment, but it shot up a hundred or so points to even qualify for us to make the move. This is what God will begin to do, but we had to make a move. We knew we had to move towards something. We had to move towards moving. We had to get things done. At that time, we needed another vehicle because we had to get around. At that point, I didn't even have the down payment money to purchase a car. So I went to this guy that I knew that had this dealership and I'm praying, it's like, God, what do I do? I found a car, I saw one, it was a nice car, it was what we needed to get around, to support, do all the stuff we needed to do. And it was like, wait a minute, okay, Lord, I need your help in this, I need your wisdom. I said, Holy Spirit, I'm acknowledging you. Show me what to do. I was in a Kroger store going shopping. I remember I grabbed a cart. See, I remember it. I remember these moments and he told me what to do. He says, I want you to do this. Tell the man that you'll break down the deposit into four payments and that you'll pay that. And at the end of you paying for the deposit, then you'll start the payment to pay off the car and to pay for the car. I said, okay. Cause see, whenever God gives you instruction, there's always favor attached to it. When God gives you an instruction, he's with you all the way while he's instructing you. So I picked up the phone right there and told the guy, hey, this is what I can do. I don't have the full amount, but this is what I can do. And he says, all right. He said, and I had to say in his, his tone, he said, all right, brother. Yeah, he had this accent. And he says, come on, get the car. And so I went, got the car. He said, he told me, he says, man, I've never done this for anybody. I've never done this for anybody, but I knew I heard from God. I heard from God by the Holy Spirit abiding in me to lead God and direct me. God was already involved with the whole move. He was already involved. Watch this. He would not get us to a place where we would get to a place of having a new place to live and not provide the transportation to get back and forth. to what. See, when he gives you one thing, he'll give you everything attached to it. That's good right there. That's good right there. Because see, sometimes you're just thinking about the one thing, but God thinks about everything. Then at the same time, okay, God, I need this, but I also need that because when this comes, this is attached to that. And God will start saying, okay, I already know what you have need of before you even ask me, but I'm waiting for you to come to me about this thing. So whoever that's for, that's, that's good. He said, and then all of a sudden, boom, God started doing. It was right there in the wheelhouse where we could take care of it. And then God not only did this, God gave me an increase on my job where I was just doing something as a contractor. Then they offered me a full-time position that the increase took place instantly right before the move even took place, right before the qualifications. God was setting everything up where I was well able, glory to God, possess more enough, more than enough to require no aid or support, but furnished in abundance for every good work and charitable donation. God knew that I could take care of it all. Watch this. I could take care of this with just what I was making at that moment. See, this is stuff, stuff like that. Then God with my wife, he started doing things with her. But see, then even when she came under attack, see stuff like that, God will do because he's trying to get you to a place and he's taking you step by step by step. And so God's ability will come on your ability to do what you could not do in your natural ability. And God said, if I did it with this, I'll also do it with that. It may start off with the small thing, but then it'll turn into the big thing. If, watch this. If I watch this, if I increase what you needed to get you there, won't I do it again to get you there? Won't I do it the same way you depended on me? Sometimes what happens is when God increases us, we stop depending on him and start depending on the resources that he blessed us with. And you lose the hunger. You lose the dependency on him. And so it's like, come back to me. Did I not do this for you already? He says, I put you in remembrance of this stuff. It's the same principle that you use to believe me for the small thing. It's the same thing. The same thing that you believe me for, for the apartment is the same thing you can use to believe me for the house is the same thing you can believe use to believe me for the building is the same thing you can use to believe me for the money to come in for college is the same thing you can use. Whatever it is, your faith and the Holy spirit within you can get the job done now. 
He knows how to get it done. He knows what a supply is. Amen. Now watch this. He says, I want to, I'm looking for people. God says, I want to do, I want, <laughs> those that know their God shall be strong and do exploits. Those that know God, all right, God, take us on this adventure now. I'm tired of playing it safe. I'm tired of playing it safe. I'm tired of living on the shore when you call me to walk on water. The deep calleth unto the deep. Some of you have been tired of saying, it's not that you don't celebrate other people's success, but God, you saying, God, I want my own. I want to see it not in order to believe, but because I believe. Your word says this. So it's time for me to see it at work in my life, to do great exploits. Now say, Lord, lead me, guide me, and direct me, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, acknowledge him. This is God abiding in us by the person of the Holy Spirit. Acknowledge the Holy Spirit. I need your supernatural ability to get this thing done. I need your strength. I need your energy. I need your creativity. If you call me to do this, that means you got to energize me to get it done. Glory to God. Second Chronicles, Second Chronicles, uh, chapter 16, verse 9. Let's go there. Second Chronicles, chapter 16, verse 9. I'm reading this out of the Amplified Classic. It says simply this, for the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong in behalf of those whose hearts are blameless toward him. You have done foolishly in this. Therefore, from now on, you shall have wars, it says. He says, watch this. If your heart is blameless towards him, <clears throat> our hearts towards God, understanding who he is. This is why, too, it's like, okay, those that know their God, we understand, Lord, the heart posture I need to have before you, that I need to walk in your love. He says, keep this commandment that you walk in love that you keep this commandment of love. You love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and strength. You love your neighbor as yourself. But then he says, also, as I've loved you, love others. And so on these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. So Father, I demonstrate my posture of being a loving individual, not harboring ill will, unforgiveness, doubt and unbelief, that my heart is blameless towards you. God, you want to do something strong through me. You want to do something strong. And I love this. I, I, he says, I'm looking to show myself strong. I'm looking for somebody. I don't care how old or how young. He's looking for somebody that's going to truly believe him, that's willing to say, God, I'm going to trust you with this. I'm going to believe you. I've allowed doubt and unbelief to, to chain me for years. I'm ready to break free so that you can do something strong through me. Come on. I'm speaking to you now. I'm speaking. I'm speaking to myself. I'm speaking to you. God, show yourself strong through me. Show yourself strong through me. Do a work in me and then let your spirit come upon me so now I can do some great exploit for you, God. Use me. Ask him to use you. Submit yourself to him. Bow down to him. Humble yourself under the mighty hand of God and he'll elevate you in due season. He'll elevate you. I know, God, I know it may seem like, okay, because sometimes you think about the, 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 the process at hand, things that God may have already talked to you about that now you're working on and it's like, okay, God, I got to take care of this. You told me to take care of that. And God will take you back. And God is like, God is not obligated to repeat himself, but he will. He'll tell you, Lord, refresh me. Holy Spirit, refresh me. What was it that I forgot to do? Was it something that I left, I, it's been left undone? Is it something that I know? This is why two pay, pay, watch this, paper never forgets. So I like to write stuff down. But the important thing is to write it down and to then go back and review it. Keep it before you. Make it a lesson if you got to. God, you told me to do this. I'm working on this now. So he says this. Okay. He says, I, I want to show myself strong on your behalf. I'm looking for somebody that's willing to believe me to do something greater. So now it's like, okay, God, I may have backed off in the past. Remind me of some things that maybe you told me to do that I didn't do, but from where I am now, what adjustments do I need to make? So Holy Spirit, so now I, I want us to change our language a little bit, little bit, little bit. 
Yes, it's the Father. We want to acknowledge the Father. Jesus said, whatever you ask the Father in my name, he'll give it to you. But what I want us to focus in on right now is because sometimes we think about the Father, and we even think about Jesus, the Son. But I want us, because we're specifically talking and dealing with the Holy Spirit now as well, I want you to begin to acknowledge the Holy Spirit. I want you to begin to talk to him. It's okay. He's there. He abides in you. Acknowledge him. He'll reveal all truth to you. He'll reveal things to you that Jesus has said. He'll reveal to you the things from the word of God. Whatever he speaks is in alignment with the word because the spirit and the word agree. All right. So this is going to be very important because he said, I'm ready to do something through and in my people. So let's get ready, spirit of fire. Let's get ready, body of Christ. So wherever you are, God wants to do something great through you, but he's working in you first. He's doing surgery in you. This is why we dealt with the spirit within first, that he wants to do some surgery. He wants to heal some wounds. He wants to, he wants to begin to, to do some exploits through you. But he says, I got to get you to a place in some cases where you can even handle where I'm taking you. So I got to put you on the surgical table of life and begin to say, okay, I want you to deal with this pride. Now I want you to deal with this lust. Now I want you to deal with this doubt and unbelief. Now I want you to deal with this memory or this history, even in your family, that you're going to break the cycle that has been good, that is perpetuated throughout your family. And he says, you're going to be the first one. It's time for you to change the trajectory of your life and your legacy for your family. He says, I can do all of that because I promised you in my word that bless your seed has been promised to be blessed. Now, Lord, maybe I didn't do it all right then, but I'm coming to you now and I need your help now. Holy Spirit, help me to do this thing. Show me what I need to do. Show me what, how I need to begin to talk. One of the first things that you do to begin to change your trajectory, to change your course, thank you, Holy Spirit, is to begin to speak the answer. Speak where you're going. Talk like it's so. The Bible talks about the tongue being like the rudder of a ship, the helm of a ship. That small rudder can turn that big ship, but watch this. And sometimes depending on the larger the ship, sometimes the course correction takes a little bit, but if you keep that helm in place, it'll get you to where you are trying to go, but you got to keep it. It's like the thermostat of your life that it sets the temperature. It sets it. It sets it for the course of your life. I declare according to the word of God, because your faith comes from your knowledge of the word. So Holy Spirit, you'll begin to show me how to turn this thing into now a confession of my faith where I begin to declare, I begin to decree, I begin to move. Now this is important. Watch this. If he begins to show you something that you've been called to do, this is what I started doing. I started writing down declarations of my faith to assist me to get where he showed me he's taking me and he wants me to go. So I'll say things and then he says, okay, I want you, this needs to be a daily faith confession. And so sometimes I hit it on every day or every other day. And sometimes like, no, I need you to now become more disciplined in this. I'm going to read some of this to you. Just intentional. Now watch this. This is what happened with me. I began to just develop my own. Okay. And just with him, he'll then watch this. This is what I do. I'll get the Holy spirit involved with it. Show me what to speak. Show me what I need to begin to declare and to decree. And so I started writing stuff down. There is like, I call my family, my church, my business is blessed, flourishing and thriving. I declare that I walk in the fear of the Lord and in the comfort of the Holy Spirit. I declare that I'm an excellent husband, father, son, family member. I declare that I'm an excellent leader in my home, ministry, businesses, community and in the earth. I says, I declare that my wife and I have an excellent marriage full of passion, peace, intimacy, fun, unity, productivity, enjoyment, and fulfillment. I have a great relationship with my children and they with us as their parents and they live holy and full of godly integrity, abundance, joy, and peace. I declare that I finish right and I finish strong in life. 
I declare that I'm a great kingdom influencer. My words carry great weight around the world. I am blessed and highly favored by my God. My destiny is constantly being fulfilled and I declare that I'm an excellent communicator. I declare that I am bold and I'm strong and I influence leaders in every area of life. My words produce great power. It produces results everywhere I go. I will fulfill the number of my days with joy, fruitfulness, productivity, and godliness. And watch this. I am satisfied with long life and God shows me his salvation. I live long and I live strong. I'm a wise master builder in the kingdom of God. Demonic forces, principalities, powers, rulers of darkness of this world and spiritual wickedness in high and heavenly places are powerless against me. Why? Because I function in the authority of the Lord Jesus Christ. God is rerouting my life to finish right and strong. And I declare Spirit of Fire Fellowship, Michael May Ministries has 100,000 active adult partners, members, and supporters worldwide who pray, serve, and give to our ministry on a daily, weekly, monthly, and yearly basis. I declare that signs, wonders, and miracles follow my life in ministry. My voice is heard, received, and acknowledged all around the world. I declare that we live in the house of our dreams and that it is fully furnished with an excellent decor and paid for. I declare that I earn and have and receive $1 million monthly income. I declare that I cast vision with excellence and manifest everything that God has called me to do and that the Holy Spirit reveals to me to do. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I have an excellent spirit and work ethic. I am disciplined. Watch this. I'm disciplined in all that I do and flexible to enjoy life and follow the leading of the Holy Spirit. I am not a procrastinator, but I'm a go getter. I'm quick to obey the Holy Spirit. I walk in great power. I walk in great integrity. I walk in great character and I do what's right because it's right. And I and I do it right. I'm an excellent steward of all resources, relationships and the mysteries of God. God is raised raising up people to use their power, their resources, and their influence to help me and to assist me. I'm excellent in business and I have a sharp and astute business acumen. The spirit of the Lord rests heavenly upon me, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord is upon me. Goodness and mercy follow me all the days of my life. And I declare that I'm an excellent leader in the earth and in the kingdom of God. My leadership influence is growing day by day and I walk in great power and the gifts of the Holy Spirit manifest in my life greatly. See, I'm, I ain't even finished yet. But see, that's what the Holy Spirit began to, he was helping me to write this stuff out. This was stuff he deposited in my heart already, but then I would just begin to write it out and says, I need you to start declaring it. I need you to start believing it for you shall decree a thing and it shall be established. I'm empowering you to do this. I've granted you authority to do this. I need you to start using all of these things, all of these gifts, all of these weapons that are at your disposal, but you got to start off with your faith. You got to believe that God going to do something big through you and in you. It's time for it. It's time that God is going to work effecti effectively in me, that I'm free from hurt. I'm free from pain. I'm free from disease, dis-ease, whether it's in my mental faculties or in my physical body. I declare in the name of Jesus that I am well, that I am healed. Every disease, germ, virus, bad bacteria, and infirmity that tries to touch my body dies instantly. My organs function in the perfection in which God created them to function. Function. In the name of Jesus, all of the levels in my body are normalized. I declare that I am healthy and that I am strong in Jesus' name. I declare I have the mind of Christ and the wisdom of God is formed within me. See, you got, I'm telling you, when you start speaking, power is released. You can tell the way that I'm speaking it is, this is in me. So it's flowing. See, when something flows out of you with power, that's how they did with Jesus. They took note. This dude teaching with authority. He ain't talking like everybody else. See, this power upon you, it'll cause you to be elevated in the eyes of men. When you speak, people listen. 
What was that, E.F. Hutton? When E.F. Hutton speaks, see, all, some of y'all remember that commercial from years ago. He said, when E.F. Hutton speaks, everybody listens. When you talk, your words carry weight. People listen to you. Influence is growing. You can lead up in an organization. <laughs> That's a whole nother thing. <laughs> See, God will show you. He'll have you in spaces and places where you just have the right heart posture, heart posture that you are doing what's right because it's right and doing it right. And God can trust you with more. And he starts doing stuff in you. In Luke 4, let's go here. This is Jesus speaking. I'm going to go to Luke chapter 4, verse 18 and 19 in the Amplified. And this is Jesus. I love it. This is after he came out of the wilderness being tempted 40 days and nights. And he found a book where it was written from the prophet Isaiah. Isaiah, as it said, but that's Isaiah. And he starts in verse 18, for the spirit of the Lord is upon me. The spirit of the Lord is upon me. It's up on me because he has anointed me, the anointed one, the Messiah to preach the good news, the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to announce release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind to send forth as delivered those who are oppressed, who are downtrodden, bruised, crushed, broken down by calamity to proclaim the acceptable, the accepted and acceptable year of the Lord, the day when salvation and the free favors of God profusely abound. Now, 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 because see, there's something about when you, when, when a person is, is preaching under the anointing, demonstration ought to take place. Stuff ought to happen. Let's go back. Let's, I don't want to just read through this. The spirit of the Lord is upon me. So this is how I do what I do, Jesus is saying. Remember, he was baptized in the river Jordan by John. The Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit descended upon him like a dove. Then he, went in, he was led by the spirit into the wilderness. Then he came out in the power of the spirit after he successfully endured the temptation. I'm, I'm going to deal with that a little bit later, but even through his development in the wilderness, he came out stronger. Then he goes, as his custom was, he went to the temple and found a place where it was written. Then he starts reading about himself. But I also want you to think about it when Christ reads about himself and we are engrafted in him and we are a part of his body, we are partakers, partners in this anointing. He says, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me. To anoint means to rub on, to smear on. God paints himself on you. God, as I'm preaching, God's ability is upon me to do what I'm doing. And I've recognized that over the years. You'll begin to see, this is how you can even begin to tell what you're called to because God's ability even comes upon you while you're doing it. I don't care if it's administration. I don't care if it's coaching. I don't care what, whatever it is. He says he's, he's, he's upon me because he's anointed me, the anointed one, the anointed one, Jesus, the Messiah, to preach the good news, the gospel to the poor. Now, what's good news to somebody that's poor? Let's stop and think about this. He says, I'm anointed. Let's break this. Break this down. The good news to a person that's poor, some used to say that you don't have to be poor no more, but it's even further than that. That now that Jesus, his death, burial, and resurrection, I've already taken your poverty and I've given you the blessing. And this blessing maketh rich and add no sorrow with it. So you are equipped and blessed and empowered to be successful, even in the area of finances, because now I've come and now I'm anointed to preach your deliverance from captivity, not just preach it, but he was the sin sacrifice that brought us out of it. He said to preach the good news, the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to announce release to the captives. You have been delivered and set free and recovery of sight to the blind. Wait a minute. 
You have been delivered and set free. So stop wallowing in your past hurts because Jesus said you already been set free and he's anointed me to come and tell you, you already set free. When you are in Christ, you are a new creation. Old things are passed away and all things are made new. So now spiritually you've been brought out, but in your soul, you still been stuck. And I declare, watch this, that you have been made free, but now you got to receive it. And now begin to exercise the power that's in you to now. Oh man, physician heal thyself. To begin to speak your healing and to release the power that's in you to cause the healing to take place. I declare that I am healed from past traumas and things that have happened against me in the name of Jesus. I declare that I'm free from hurt and pain, that I don't allow that stuff to affect me any longer. I might even, I might see this, this, you can get to the place too with certain things that the anointing to forget comes upon you. What do I mean by that? You so heal from it, you don't forgot about it because you so busy walking in freedom. Somebody would have to remind you or some thought would come that may say, oh yeah, I did deal with that before, but I'm so free from that. It no longer affects me. This is the power of the spirit, but also the power of the word that this word and the Holy Spirit can free you from stuff that years of counseling still don't ain't freed you from yet. That he can come in and deal with stuff, get you to the root of that thing. If you apply this word, the healing faculties of the word that is health to all your flesh, your soul, your memories can be healed. Yeah, I remember the times of molestation, but it has no power over me ever. There ain't no shame attached to it. There ain't no this attached to it. Whatever door that was open has been closed and sealed by the power of the almighty God. And I'm like this. Now it's my job to maintain my stance of freedom. Glory to God. And I declare that I will not allow the enemy to seep into my soul to try to get me in bondage because my spirit has already been released. Boy, boy, I'm preaching. Ooh, you better hit it. He says, so I'm going to come into the crevices of your memories, the intricacies of your soul and heal you from that trauma to heal you from that pain. Stop rehearsing it. That's why the wound is fresh because you keep rehearsing it in your mind versus saying, I have already forgiven that person, forgiven of this situation. I've released it and I declare that I am healed in the name of Jesus. Something happening right now with somebody. This is the reason why I'm speaking this. The Holy Spirit is like, it is time for you to get over it. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. You've been playing victim long enough that you, you can become attached to the sympathy that you receive from being in traumatic situations. So you, cause see you get attention and God said it's time out for that junk. And the enemy is trying to keep you stagnant. Cause you afraid if you get really healed, won't nobody come around you the way that they used to. Won't nobody tend to you. And it's time for you to grow up. Yeah, I'm saying it's real strong, real straight in your face because you need to hear it. Whoever this is for, you need to hear this. You need to declare, I am not going to wallow in this any longer. I made the mistake, it's over with. I declare that I'm healed from it and I'm moving on. And I'm going to forgive even if the person never acknowledged that they did anything wrong to me. That's why it's called forgiveness. (laughs) <laughs> I had the person that came back to me and apologized for what they did to me as a child. I was like, man, it's already forgiven. And I would never even say who the person was because love covers. Their life has been transformed and changed because the similar was done to them. 
when they were younger and all that stuff. And God has healed and set free and delivered completely. Glory to God. Glory to God. Boy, I feel something. Ooh, Lord. When I start getting to these areas, boy, I feel something on me. <laughs> it's like, uh-uh. And watch this. I don't cry about it no more. I don't wallow in it. If the enemy tries to bring up something, an a old file up in my memory, no, I cast that down in the name of Jesus that has already been forgiven and forgotten. It is over. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Oh, oh shut up. Yeah, I'm saying it like this because I'm speaking to that thing. It has held you captive. I sense it. It is of the devil to keep you crippled in life. And it's time for you to come out. You're being insensitive. No, I'm not. See, when somebody that's been through it comes out of it, I see, I know how the enemy works. So I'm, that's what I'm coming for. But now I'm speaking to the giant in you to say, rise up and resist. You got to resist the wicked one. That submit yourself to God, resist the devil and he'll flee. When you submit, submit. Okay, Lord, I receive what you are saying. Now I'm going to act out on it now. And then you'll see that sucker flee. I'm telling you, he is a nasty individual. There is no light in him. Who boy. Whew. And it's like that thing, rise up. Don't listen to him. Don't listen to him. Don't listen to him. Shut it up. Shut off that thought process right now. Uh-uh. 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 See, that devil don't want you delivered. He don't want you set free. He won't. See, Christians can't be possessed, but they can be oppressed. What I'm talking about, oppression is pressure applied to your mental faculties. Where he hounds you with mistakes of the past. He hounds you with things that have happened. He hounds you and floods your memory with this stuff. And the word of God, we can cast down imaginations, images, and bring them into captivity to the obedience of the knowledge of Christ. The knowledge that I've received from this word, I've been made free. Why? Because whom the son has set free is free indeed. So I don't care if the memory of that thing comes back. No, that is the old me. You can be like Paul. I have wronged no man. Man, y'all better hear me. The blood has cleansing power. Redeeming power. Now the Holy Spirit is here to help you enforce that power and that authority that has already been delegated unto you. You're going to enforce that thing and you're going to speak with power. You under the sound of my voice, you connected to this anointing, there is going to be power that's going to be released and flowing in your life. Mm -mm. It's time for you to walk in this thing, boy. Ooh, Jesus. You talking about the Holy Ghost Army. Power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you or harm you. Power, 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 mm -hmm. Whew. power. I got disability. I got this authority. I got the right to speak it, and the Holy Spirit backs me up when I speak it. Shoot. What you say? I declare that those buildings that are called to us are released to us now in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Mm hmm. In the name of Jesus, I release the angels to go to work everything that needs to be worked out. So that when the offer is even presented, the hearts are already being dealt with now in Jesus' name. Mm. See, when you, when you speak, faith rises. When you speak, faith rises, and then faith motivates you to action now. Okay, what is it that we need to do? Gather this. Get this ready. Set this in order. Get this stuff straight. God is setting you up for mir the miraculous.
See, we, we, we read about the woman with the issue of blood who went up and touched Jesus' garment. But you got to remember prior to that, she kept saying within herself, if I may but touch the hem of his garment, I shall be made whole. If I may but touch the hem of his garment, I shall be made whole. If I may but touch, what was she doing? She was activating her faith. She was stirring up that faith in her. If I may but touch, she kept saying, she kept saying, one, one translation said she kept saying it. She kept saying it. So it was so established in her that when she pressed through, she knew that Jesus, watch this, she acted on what her faith was. Her faith was, he ain't got to touch me. All I got to do is connect with him. And I'll pull from what I have a right to. You better hear me. I'll pull from it. And he turned around, who touched me? What do you mean, Jesus? All these people, you're in the throng. Of my, all these people, what do you mean? Who touched you? No, somebody touched me different. They, they, they extracted something. Virtue went out of me. Somebody, they touched me out of curiosity. Somebody touched me out of faith. Somebody drew. He did not initiate the transaction. She did. Oh, Lord. You waiting on God and he's sitting there. It's like, I already provided everything that pertains to life and godliness. Now it's time for you to activate. Oh, Lord. It made me think back in the day. It was called the Wonder Twins on the Super Friends. And, but they would have to connect. And so when you think about the connection, they would say Wonder Twin powers activate. And so this is what I like to call faith and patience are the power twins. That when you walk by faith and walk it out consistently and then you start acting on this thing, something activates. Oh, Lord, something, 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 something getting ready to break. Something is breaking. Something is breaking. I sense it. Something, 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 something. Y'all receiving this thing. Ha <laughs> ha. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, Lord. Yeah, Lord. This is good. This is good. <laughs> Woo. There's something different and more powerful that happens when you preach under the anointing and power of God versus just talking out of your own intellect. Yeah. If I would have just talked out of my own intellect, no, God, I need your power. I need your super on my natural because my voice can't do it, but yours can do it. Your super on me can produce the healing. It can produce the freedom. Yeah. Hmm. I'm talking about taking this into boardrooms where everybody else struggling and scrambling. What's the answer? And you've been, you've been praying. You've been declaring that I have the mind of Christ. The wisdom of God is formed within me. You've been praying in the spirit, building yourself up on your most holy faith, charging yourself up. Then all of a sudden, what is it that's different about you? When you speak, stuff happens. Who, Lord, that's good. When you speak stuff that used to block us got to be removed because it's the burden removing yoke destroying whatever the hindrance was now that you showed up, it got to be removed. And in some cases it's because it was blocking from somebody else getting it because it belonged to you the whole time. And you was the only one who could crack the code to open up the safe for that thing to be released and revealed. And God been protecting it, not from you, but for you. Glory to God. Whew. Man, you better preach. Holy Ghost. Lord Jesus. Here we go. I got to end with this. Acts 1 8. See, see, um, well, oh man. Oh man. Um, I want to read this part. Act, um, Romans 8 11 through 14. I wanted to get to Acts 1 8, but let me, let me, let me deal with this. Acts 8 8 11 through 14. It says this, but the spirit, but if the spirit of him, that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you. He that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. Therefore, that word quicken means to make alive. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh, but to live after the, we're not debtors, uh, we are debtors not to the flesh to live after the flesh. For if we live after the flesh, we shall die. 
But if we watch this, but if ye through the spirit do mortify the deeds of the body or put them to death, you shall live. For as many as are led by the spirit of God, they are the sons of God. The Holy Spirit makes our bodies alive, but he also helps us to stop sinning and control the appetites and the desires, mortifying, mortifying. That desire may be there, but you can mortify it, put it to death under subjection by the Holy Spirit. I will not walk in that. I have authority over that. Sometimes some people think just because the desire is there, they have to submit to it. No, you don't. You have authority over that. Christ has freed you from it. And the only reason why sometimes that thing, that taste is still there is because it's attached to the flesh. But you are not the flesh. You are spiritual. You are the spirit man living in this house. But now watch this. I did those things. And the more you quiet the flesh, all of a sudden now, you start, watch this, you start seeing less and less of an appetite for that thing. But if you keep feeding the flesh and the desires, whether it's through the eye gate, the ear gate, the mouth at doing it, now that flesh strengthens and your spirit is being quieted because you're not feeding the real you. Build up yourself on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. When you strengthen yourself by the word, now all of a sudden I cast down images. I cast down those things that oppose the word of God. Nope, that's not the word of God. That's not God's will. I don't care how many times the media says it. I don't care how much culture tries to tell me to do it. Nope, that's wrong. That's not of God. It is ungodly and it is perverted. And I will not accept a perverted mentality from anybody. I don't care how much it's presented. That means if it keeps being presented, I shut down the presentation. Because if it's affecting you that much, shut it off. Mm -hmm. <sighs> See, that, that's the trick of the enemy. Accept it. Accept it. Laugh at it. Think it's funny. Think it's okay. Uh-uh. I can still walk in truth and not be mean or arrogant about it. But truth will offend people who don't want truth. No matter how nice you say it, no matter how strong you say it, how laid back you say it. See, the law is only an offense to the lawless. You ain't afraid of the law when you doing right. It's when you doing wrong, that's when you, the fear really kicks in. So even in the natural, from a spiritual standpoint, uh-uh, I walk guided by the dictates of the spirit because I realize I'm a new creation in Christ. Old things have passed away. All things are made new. Now I have the Holy Spirit to help me walk this life out. And so now Christ is already condemned. Watch this, giving me dominion over sin. He's already dominated. Sin does not have dominion over me. And so I walk in his dominion and freedom. I am free. Jesus made me free. So I enforce my freedom by even the words of my mouth. I cast down that image, because those images, like a computer, you got to flush that stuff out. Because you was feeding them for so long, <clears throat> no, 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 no. <laughs> See? What time is, oh man. Acts 1-8 real quick. And it reads here, but you shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you, come upon you and you. Talking about you and I shall be witnesses unto me. Jesus is speaking here. He said, you should be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. And so the Holy Spirit helps us to be a witness by what we say and what we do. And Jesus did and taught that. He demonstrated by the Holy Spirit and taught how he functioned. See, he, he showed us how he fun functioned. Acts 1 and 1, Jesus began both to do and teach. He did it, he demonstrated, then he taught. This is how I do this thing. And remember, greater work shall we do. But we got to understand what he did. We got to see his principle. What was he teaching us? 
Okay, repent. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Okay, this is how the kingdom works. The kingdom is as if a man can't see. The kingdom is like a person who went into a far country. The kingdom is like this. So we learn kingdom and begin to walk in it and says, okay, now you're empowered to do this. Now watch what I do, fellas. When you have not enough, I'm going to show you to do with not enough amongst so many. Bring it to me. I'll bless it. So we learn how to bring our insufficiency to him. He'll increase us, man. And we'll begin to multiply what we bring to him. But let's look at this too. I want to, I got to introduce this slowly. But what if now we have that same authority? I don't know if some of y'all ready for this. It's almost like, bring it to me and watch this as a representative. I can bless it and it'll increase for you. Think about this. See, I'm, I'm introducing it slowly, slowly to you. I got, I got to, see, I got to set you up for some stuff. That when you start realizing who you are, boy, you start looking at stuff different. Okay, you've given me power to get. So I'm empowered to acquire. But you also say don't do it on, upon my own lust. So I got to be still have the right attitude while I'm acquiring because I'm acquiring for your glory. But yet at the same time, you want me to be edified and built up too. You want me. Do y'all realize the first word glory mentioned? The first time that the word glory was mentioned in Genesis, it referred to wealth and possessions. Yeah. Was it Jacob and Laban, I think? He says, because of what God has done, all of this glory is ours. I have to pull it up. Um, it might be in the 31st chapter. I forgot which chapter it was. But this is the first reference. We talk about the law of first mention. When you see something mentioned first in the Bible, the theme of it usually is a tendency throughout Scripture. And so we see that first. I know the first thing most people think about glory, we think manifested presence. Oh, the glory. Oh, the glory is more important. But look, if God talks so much about this stuff, why... Why do we try to minimize what he's truly trying to share with us something about? There's an attachment to when I'm upon you, there should be visible evidence that I'm with you. There should be visible evidence that I'm working in you and through you. Men need to see. Man looks upon the outward appearance. God looks upon the heart. So God is first checking your heart posture. But then as your heart posture changes, he can trust you so that men can see God trust you. Ooh, ooh Lord. Lord, that's good. But it, see, God helps us to be a witness by what we say and do. And Jesus taught us how to do this and the Holy Spirit um, taught how he functioned. But belief is going to be the activator to the power being released. All things are possible to the person who believes. Mark 9, 23. Belief is going to be that activation. Love is the great motivator. Faith is the great activator. You have to believe. You have to believe this stuff to begin to see this stuff. God, I don't want to just talk about it. It's time for what I speak to manifest. You know what? I had this one guy one time years ago. Um, he, he left the ministry. We're still cool with the person. Now, I remember even in the kind of like the exit interview, he was like, man, I just I don't see the fruit here, blah, blah, blah. And honestly, I could not deny it. I could respect that. Cause he was honest. He didn't say it in a disrespectful way. Didn't say, but he was just being honest as to what, and it was like, okay, God. And I knew it because I was even struggling personally with God. God I I want to see because I believe it's like, wait a minute. Uh, -uh. 
You called us to do this. This is why we went, we've gone through this restructuring. We're going through this restructure. Like, no, we ought to see the goodness of God in the land of the living. Men ought to see that you called us. See, if you, you say you called to do something, but there's no fruitfulness there, I'm going to question whether you called to do it. And you, I heard from men of God that said it like this years ago. Either it's one or two things. If you're doing something you believe that God called you to do and you don't see manifestation, it's either one or two things. Either you ain't called to do it or you're terribly unfaithful. And it's like you can't move away from either one of those. Either you ain't called to do it or you ain't doing it right. May not be that you're not called to do it. It just may be, wait a minute, you know you heard God, but now, Lord, I need you to help me to do this thing right. To see the fruitfulness of this. What does it look like? This is why Paul talks about being a wise master builder. How do you help me, Holy Spirit, with the blueprint of the infrastructure for my life to get this thing done? Amen. Whew. This is good. This is good. This is good. So now wisdom shows up. Whew. Just like in the natural, an architect sits down and imagines the infrastructure of the house, the structure of the building. He or she begins to write down, draw out, draft the schematics of it. Usually on blueprints, on drafts, because I took drafting, drafting class in high school, because I used to want to be an architect, because I love building. I love buildings. I love, infra I love structures. I love seeing excellent architecture. It's a part of who I am. But it shows you measurements of how long this wall is in comparison to this wall, what's a bearing wall, low bearing wall, all of those things. And so now it's not the architect's job to now construct the building, but it was the architect's job to design the building. The architect now gives it to the general contractor who oversees the process of the building according to the pattern that's been laid out in front of them. When God begins to download to you, this is how your life is to be structured. But what do we call, con see the general contractors now tell the contractors, see the general contractors tell, talk to the plumber, talk to the electrician, talk to the people who are laying the foundation, talk to the people who are doing the landscaping. They deal with the overall building of the project. And a lot of times the general contractor is responsible for getting permits and all of this stuff to oversee what the architect has given unto them. And I liken it to a pastor, to a leader of a vision. This is what he's showing me. We need to build according to pattern. Now watch this. Now you give it to the contractors who God has called to be connected, whether it's over outreach, whether it's over media, whether it's over discipleship, whatever it is. He says, now let's build according to the pattern that the gym, that the great architect has now downloaded into my imagination and it comes out as vision. Same way for your household. What's the vision for your house? Without a vision, people perish. The Holy Spirit helps you with that. But know this, when he gives you the vision, okay, it's going to require faith. It's going to require your believing it. But it's also going to require your work ethic to get it done. The permit ain't going to foul itself. The beam ain't going to put itself up supernaturally. You got to put it up. You got to nail it in. And then you got to make sure that the contractors know what they are doing because if they don't lay the foundation, right? The whole house can crumble. This is why God starts dealing with you from the bottom up. 
who some of you at different spaces in your life. Some of you don't need the foundation. You now need to start the building project. All you need are the schematics. The what do I put here? What do I put here? And then watch this. Your general contractors are your team. Your contractors are your team that God is surrounding you with. The Lord gave me this word for, for the ministry years ago that God will begin to give you escorts into your good life. That word is still good. That you will meet people and you may meet the plumber your financial advisor. You may meet the uh, the electrician, your health and wellness coach. You may need whatever it is, your marriage counselor. You may need all of these people. See, and they may, some may come from the same source, but God will begin to put people around you to get the answers to you. But now you got to begin the process of building. He's already empowered you. He's empowered all of us to succeed. Who, man, and I'm out of time. Lord, we thank you. Who, this was, man, this is the building, the building. We thank you, Lord. We give you praise going on in Jesus' name. Now, if you're here today, you never made Jesus the Lord of your life. I want to pray for you today. Hmm. If you don't know beyond a shadow of a doubt that if you were to die today that you'd make it to heaven, I want you to pray this prayer with me. But I want to say something before I say that. I, made that sta- I make that statement at times, and I've heard others make that statement. And some people struggle with their salvation. Am I saved? Or because you did something wrong, you feel like you lost your salvation? No, it doesn't work like that. The Bible declares that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart, believe in your heart, confess with your mouth, believe in your heart, that God is raising from the dead, you shall be saved. For with the heart, man believes unto righteousness. What does that mean? When you believe this, now you'll be made righteous or in right standing with God. It's your belief in that. It's not you doing any other thing other than believe. And with the, watch this, the heart, with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. So I believe it and now I confess it. It's established in my life. I'm born again and I'm saved now. So it's not based off of how you feel. One day you feel saved, one day you don't feel saved. No, it's based off of your faith in Jesus Christ and what he has done, his finished work. When he died on the cross for all of our sins, was raised from the dead for us to be justified, made righteous in God's eyes because he took the penalty of our sin. So we no longer have to go to hell. Thank God for that. So now all of a sudden that's taken care of. So if you've already done that, you just need to be confident in the fact that you're born again. So if you make a mistake and you sin, even after being born again, Jesus, watch this, Jesus is our advocate with the Father. He's forever making intercession for us. And usually what we just end up doing is like, Lord, forgive me. You know, not in order to be forgiven, but because he is forgiven, he's like, Lord, I don't want to, I don't want to do this to, man, that thing, that, that, that violates who I am. That violates who I am. Jesus died and took care of my sin. And he's forever making intercession for me, reminding you that he, watch this, that the father has to look at us through what the son has done. This is a beautiful thing. So Lord, now, now I want to get better at this. It's just like with a child. You don't condemn a child because they're learning how to walk. How foolish would that look at me? How abusive would that look for me if I got a little baby that's learning how to walk and they stumble and they fall, uh-uh, come on, get on up. You got it. Keep going. Yeah, and as they grow older and older and older, there are things that I expect for them to know and to do because now they're older, they understand. But I'm telling you, man, stop beating yourself up over stuff. Now, for those that say, you know what, I've never made Jesus the Lord of my life. I want to today. I want you to repeat this prayer after me. Say, Lord Jesus. I believe that you're the Christ, the son of the living God. I believe that you died for my sins, that you were raised from the dead for my justification. That means I'm made right in God's eyes. Say, I believe that and I receive that by faith now. Say, Satan, I no longer belong to you. Jesus is my Lord, and I'll serve only him. 
all the days of my life. Say, thank you, Heavenly Father, for giving me your son. I'm saved now. I'm born again. I have eternal life. Now say this, say, Holy Spirit, I ask that you come inside me now to live in me, to dwell in me, to abide in me. I now have the ability to speak with other tongues as you give me the utterance. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, if you got born again, filled with the Holy Spirit, we want to hear from you. There's information on our screen as to how you can get in contact with us. You can send us an email, message us, and let us know whether it's through our social media platforms. And just let us know, I'm born again, I'm saved. We need to develop something so that, you, uh, yeah, we're going we're gonna, to, amen. We want you to get in contact with us. I'm serious, I'm serious. Don't, don't waste this moment. God brought you here for a reason. He has you tuning in for a reason. You're receiving for a reason. We want to hear from you. Because we want to help you grow in your life in Christ. We want to help you develop in this thing. Step by step. We want to help develop you. So, if that's you, we want you, there's information on your screen as to how you can do so. And if you're believing also to join this church, you want to join this local fellowship, whether you're local or global, you can be, if you're global and you're not here locally, you can be a part of our online community as well. And so we want to be a blessing to you, we want to help you grow in your walk with the Lord. But if not, listen, if you're somewhere else, find a good Bible-believing church, teaching church that will develop you and grow you in the things of God. You can still receive from this ministry, but if you're somewhere that way you desire that connection and that tangible touch, Find a good place, pray, and ask God to show you the place that you need to be at. We highly recommend this ministry. If you're here in the um, Richmond, local surrounding counties, to come in person with us as well, but also online. You can be a part of our community. There are many people who are still a part of our community that have never come in person. And so we're just here for you. We love you. We're praying for you. We appreciate you so much in Jesus' name. At this time, we're going to honor God in our giving, what we like to call opportunity for prosperity. So at this time, if you desire to sow your tithes, your offerings, your gifts of love, even as Abram, he tithed to Melchizedek, the high priest. This is before the law came into being, before there was a command to tithe. He willingly and freely gave. See, this, this is why Jesus didn't come to do away with the law, but to fulfill it. But then Jesus, after the order of Melchizedek, he can receive our tithes and offerings and gifts of love. And he's already released this blessing because if any man be in Christ, he's Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. He's blessed with faith for Abraham because Abraham was faithful and Jesus being faithful. And now all of a sudden now he died for our sins and now made us right with God. And now that we're right with God, we have this blessing according to Ephesians 1 and 3. For we have been blessed with all spiritual blessings in Christ Jesus. Past tense. We've already been blessed. Now, as a result of this, we're honoring God in our giving. So it comes from a different place. Not I got to, but I get to. And I want to honor you. And as I give, you said it'll be given to me again. Good measure, pressed down, shaking together, running over. You said if I sow sparingly, you'll reap sparingly. But if I sow bountifully, I'll reap bountifully. You said as a man purposeth in his heart, so let him give. I purpose to honor you. I purpose to give to you. Not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loves a cheerful, joyous, prompt to do it giver whose heart is in their giving. So let's honor God today. Let's honor him. As we sow, as you give, there's information coming up on your screen that there's a QR code you can scan. It'll take you to a secure page where you can sow. Um, there's also some different means by which, whether it's uh, Cash App, Venmo, uh, I think giving maybe by text as well is up there. Um, and for those that still want to write checks, there's a P.O. box that's up there as well, P.O. box 13423, Richmond, Virginia, 23225, that if you're writing out a check, you can make it um, to SOFF, that's sufficient, or Spirit of Fire Fellowship, and you spell million, M-I-L-L-I-O-N, amen, praise God. We have much to do and much to accomplish. We thank God for your continued financial support. 
that there are much upgrades that we're going to begin to do from our media standpoint, outreach initiatives that we need to get done to be a blessing to people, to feed the hungry, clothe the naked, to provide counseling services, financial services to people. We want to help people build, grow, and develop as to who they are in Christ. The facilities that we need to get the job done, we are going to get this thing done in Jesus' name. Praise God. So as you give, I'm believing with you for the corresponding return in Jesus' name. May God's hand and grace be upon you. May he multiply great favor. We declare and decree that you're out of debt, all needs are met, that you have plenty more to put in store in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Now, I'm going to do, I'll be doing a series again on, um, on giving. I'm going to do, deal with tithes, offering, stewardship. But one of the things even with that, sometimes you ask people to give, but sometimes you got to teach people even how to budget. And sometimes people are learning how to steward the money. That you'll find that you got more money than you realize. Now you got to see where it's being allocated, where you're telling it where to go. That is, listen, money makes a lousy master but an excellent servant. That you're now to have dominion and authority even over spending, saving, investing, sowing, giving, the whole nine. That God wants you to increase more and more, you and your family. Amen. Now, at this time... I'm out of time, but certainly not out of message. I want to do the final benediction or the final blessing over you. I declare that great favor will begin to manifest in your life this week. That approvals that need to be done will be approved now. Approvals now. Great favor now. I'm serious. Receive this. <laughs> If you're getting ready to apply for something, go ahead. Believe for favor to show up. And it will, in Jesus' name. Amen. Love you guys. See you next time. We are in person uh, next Sunday. Don't forget Spirit of Fire at home. We love you. We appreciate you. God bless you. Peace.